The arterial blood gas analysis, first we have to understand the few equations. When this can be happened, respiratory alkalosis, it can be happened in hyperventilation. Hyperventilation, you are taking too much of breath, so respiratory rate will be so high. There's a lots of causes of metabolic acidosis, that's why it can be divided into two types, depending on anion gap. I hope this is all from you to need to know to pass any post-graduation examinations. Doctors, welcome on behalf of the Doctors Academy to uh, the new sessions. I am Dr. Tamjit, mentors of the Doctors Academy for the MRCS program. So today we will discuss about uh, arterial blood gas analysis. I know it's very much complicated to those who are new to these topics and it is a very important question. Every session you may find these questions related to it. Regardless of the examinations in your practical life, it is very important to understand the basics of it. So let's try to start in an easy way how to understand the topics. So in the arterial blood gas analysis, first we have to understand the few equations. The number one equations we had that the concentrations of the hydrogen ion is reverse, not reverse, it is a proportionate to the partial carbon dioxide level and on the down inversely related to the bicarbonate concentrations. You know the logarithm of H plus, we make it as a pH, so increase H plus means decrease pH and decrease H plus means increase pH or alkali. So just in short, we can remember pH is kind of proportionate to bicarbonate level. So whenever there is increased bicarbonate, we can find increased pH. And whenever we have the decreased partial carbon dioxide, we can have an increased pH. Inversely, to need the pH to go down, to go down, we have two options. Either the bicarbonate level have to go down or the partial carbon dioxide level need to go up. And the two systems are very interconnected to regulate this pH in the blood. One is respiratory and another one is the kidney. So this partial carbon dioxide, you all know, it is kind of related with respiratory. And the bicarbonate level is maintained by kidney or renal or we can call it the metabolic. So the first thing we have to decide, what is the pH value? So the normal pH value is 7.35 to 7.45. That is the normal value. So in the scenario, they give you a box. So if it is less than 7.34, just say example, it is 7.1, just say example. What the first diagnosis we would like to make, this is acidosis. Doesn't matter is respiratory or Metabolic, we will think about that later, but first, this is a acidosis. So then we have to see, to make a pH 7.4, we have two options. Either one, the partial carbon dioxide level need to go high, or a bicarbonate level need to go down. Whichever suits this criteria, we can define it is respiratory acidosis or metabolic acidosis. So what is the normal value of carbon dioxide? It is kind of 4.5 to 6 kilopascal. So the normal value would be given. Sometimes they give the, it is better to understand just how the normal value. So 4.5 to 6 is the normal KPA value of the partial carbon dioxide. So to make a respiratory acidosis, to make it a respiratory acidosis, the partial carbon dioxide level need to be more than 6. Need to be more than 6. So then we can call it respiratory acidosis. And to make it a metabolic acidosis, the, by, the carbon dioxide level will be normal within that range, but this level, bicarbonate level, needs to go down. So what are the normal value of this bicarbonate level? 22 to 26 millimole per liter. So below 22, it needs to be to make it metabolic acidosis. Just for example, it is like 18. So then we can call it metabolic acidosis. So in same regards, let's talk about the alkalosis. So anyway, so if the pH is given more than 7.45, if, if pH is given 
more than 7.45 say example 7.55 so that means it is an alkalosis it is and so it could be either metabolic or it could be either respiratory so make it a respiratory alkalosis respiratory alkalosis so carbon dioxide level need to go down and in that case for example this is a respiratory alkalosis carbon dioxide level need to go down and the bicarbonate level will be normal but to make it a metabolic alkalosis metabolic alkalosis the question is about the bicarbonate the bicarbonate level need to go up need to go up bicarbonate level need to go up so that is the basic for now so let's just get to the real scenario so they give you a questions blah 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 what about the question make they give you a box and they give you the ph bicarbonate level and partial carbon dioxide now we have to get decide the first thing first look at the ph is it less than 7.35 or more than 7.45 it is less than 7.35 so first this is a acidosis so what are the other value partial carbon dioxide level it was supposed to be 4.5 to 5 so it is uh, 7 so it is raised what about the bicarbonate level it is normal so this is a respiratory acidosis case so it's a respiratory acidosis case what if what if it is not 24 let's make it it is uh, 28 the normal value was 22 to 26 now the bicarbonate is 28 why because body will try to compensate it will try to compensate it so just an example now it is not 28 it is now 26 it is also increased Body will try to compensate it, trying to compensate, but my mean metabolic compensation has started. But does the pH has any change? No, pH, for example, pH is still 7.18. Then we will call it partially compensated respiratory acidosis. So example, over the time, over the time, over the time, this 7.18 becomes 7.35. Partial carbonate is still raised and the bicarbonate level is still rise. It is also raised because it is a respiratory acidosis from the beginning, right? So to compensate it, bicarbonate is raised tremendously. So now it becomes compensated. In that case, we will say compensated respiratory acidosis. Station number two. So they gave you a scenario, a pH, so the pH is 7.56. So this is an alkalosis, straightforward thing. Fine. What about the carbon dioxide level is low, okay? And carbon dioxide level is said to be normal. So this is a respiratory alkalosis. Alkalosis. When this can be happened, respiratory alkalosis, day. it can be happened in hyperventilation. Hyperventilation. You are taking too much of breath, so respiratory rate will be so high. You are putting carbon dioxide out of your body. When can be happened? In anxiety. In examination, they give, might give you just the, what are the cause of this scenario? What might be the cause? The cause is anxiety. Another one, pulmonary embolisms, hyperventilations. That could be the cause of it. Okay, so again, so body will try to, so the problem is a respiratory body will try to compensate through what? Through the kidney. So there is the uh, bicarbonate level. So bicarbonate level need to go down over the time to make the 7.56, pull it down between the normal value. So just over the time, let's say the pH become 7.42 the partial carbon dioxide level still too low but the bicarbonate level to compensate this bicarbonate level raised and raised and raised what will be seen it is compensated yes compensated respiratory alkalosis have been compensated so we call it compensated respiratory alkalosis session three ph 7.22 so acidosis so this is acidosis which type our carbon dioxide level okay normal bicarbonate level is getting lower so this is a metabolic acidosis so this is a when can it be happen 
frequently asked question about metabolic acidosis. When can it be happen? Any kind of sepsis, patient is shock, cardiogenic shock, sepsis, abdominal sepsis, and all kinds of salicylate poisonings. A patient has salicylate poisoning, methanol poisoning, aspirin poisoning, diabetic acidosis, some diarrhea, this kind of things. And there's a lots of causes of metabolic acidosis. That's why it can be divided into two types, depending on anion gap. So anion gap can be normal, and sometimes anion gap would be normal, or sometimes anion gap would be increased. The question will ask about this one. How to calculate the anion gap is the difference between positive ion and the negative ion. So how to di diagnose the increased anion gap? So anywhere that you find the acidosis thing, anywhere you will see the acidosis name, that is the increased cause of acidic, like DKA, salicylate poisoning, diabetic ketoacidosis, methanol, this kind of thing. So what is when the normal, any related with the GIT, except RTA, renal tubular acidosis. This is the only acidosis where the normal anion gap, other than where you ever see in the acidosis, that's in the increase anion gap level. So diversion, utero sigmoidoscopy. So, so this is the cause of normal anion gap, but metabolic acidosis. Now the final part, this is the last scenario. So again, what is this? This is an acidosis, seven point, less than 7.35. So this is a acidosis. Bicarbonate level is, and oxygen level is kind of lower, and bicarbonate level is kind of also higher. So this is the most type of frequent equation you will be faced, and this is kind of clumsy. So let's break it down. So why the carbon acidosis can be occur? Increase carbon dioxide or decrease bicarbonate? So we have found the increased partial carbon dioxide level. So that means this is the ultimate cause of this acidosis. This is irrelevant for now. Just think about the bicarbonate level. It was supposed to get low or normal, but it is increasing. So why? it is trying to compensate it, partially compensate it, trying to eat. So why they put the oxygen level? Why they mention it? The oxygen level is supposed to know low in here. So they put the oxygen level low here because one of the cause, so one of the cause of in here that the patient has suffering from chronic obstructive lung disease. Patients may have an opioid poisoning. So that's why respiratory suppression. So patient may has respiratory suppression or depression, chronic COPD, that is the similar case they will give. So even asthma patient that can be also given. So this is the a case that this is a respiratory acidosis. So still patient has hypoxia. So this is a type two type of respiratory failure. RCS love these questions. So this is kind of clumsy. So I hope this is all from you to need to know to pass any post-graduation examinations or MRCS Part A in ABG interpretations related topics. So I hope you understand the topics. If you have any questions, let us know. Again, I, on behalf of the Doctors Academy, I myself, Dr. Tamjit, wish you all the best for your upcoming examinations. Till the next video, have a nice day.